If you have your Bible, get your Bibles out or get your phones out. We're in Luke chapter 2 this morning. If you're new with us, we've been studying through the book of Acts in our series called New Acts, which has been extremely life-changing for all of us. By the way, my name is Pastor Tony. I'm the worship pastor here. So it is nice to be able to have the kids lead us in worship instead of just hearing my voice or the worship team every single week. So it's a nice little uh, added, added change for us this weekend. But um, we're going to be taking this week off of Acts, and I have a short message for us for our family service. If we all want to stand, we're going to read the Word of God together. Luke chapter 2. Who else wanted to be in their PJs this morning? Man, I kind of wanted to be in my PJs. I missed that memo. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Lord, thank you so much for your word this morning. Thank you so much for that beautiful time of worship with the kids this morning. God, bless our kids' ministry. Lord, bless our kids in this church. God, we're so so grateful for them, Lord. And uh, we ask, Lord, that you would speak to us during this time, Lord, the short time that we have together today. Would you speak to us, God? Would you make yourself real in this moment, Lord? that we would experience you maybe for the first time for some of us. Lord, that this would not just be a traditional thing, God, of just listening to the Christmas story, but we would remember that you came for us. And so God bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can be seated this morning. I don't know about you, but at times, I am a little hard of hearing. Did you hear that this morning? Everybody? I'll say it again. I don't know about you, but I'm a little hard of hearing at times. I've been doing music for so long, and so it might be because of that, but I also love turning up my music really, really loud. Any loud music listeners in here? So I've done, have definitely done some damage. I would love to say, though, that I'm a good listener, but can you, can you be a good listener but bad at listening at the same time? Is that a thing? Because I think I might be there. Are you a good listener? Who are, who are good listeners in here or think that they're good listeners in here? Okay, great. I think I might be in the running for first place for not hearing my wife the first time she tells me something. Literally, I could be looking at her dead in the face, and nothing computes, right? Like, I don't hear what she's saying. I'm not really following what she's saying. You guys ever see the, the, the Pixar movie Inside Out? And there's that scene where they're all at the dinner table. The mom is trying to talk to the daughter. The daughter's not really giving her anything. So she looks to the dad and kind of, and it's, remember, all the emotions are in, the he- are in their heads. And they, it kind of goes, appears into the emotions of the mind and things like that. And, and so she looks at the dad and like motions to do something. And it goes into the dad's brain and all of his emotions and everybody in his brain is watching a hockey game. And they look over at the mom, and they're like, oh my gosh, she's looking at us. What does she say? Did she say something? Is today garbage day? What is going on? And everything starts panicking, and and it goes into her brain, and she's looking at him like he's giving me that stupid face again of not listening. Well, that's pretty much an accurate picture for me. My wife will tell me something, and I mean like a lot of something. Maybe like a story or a bunch of things I need to remember, and I'll be looking at her, and like the computer error sign comes up, did not compute. Now I'm faced with a difficult decision. Do I ask her to repeat what she just said, or do I pretend I was listening, or maybe is there something I can ask that would give the implication to her that I was listening, but need further explanation so she would explain everything all over again? (laughs) <laughs> I, need to li- I need to listen better. Every year, I think I approach Christmas in similar ways. God, I want to hear from you this year. I want to silence all the noise of everything going on and enjoy the season with you and hear from you. 
but it never fails at every season, I think all of us want to approach Christmas different. Almost like a New Year's resolution, but it's like a Christmas resolution, if you will. But I think I've failed more Christmas resolutions than I have New Year's resolutions. Maybe some of these are your resolutions. I want to enjoy Christmas more. I'm going to buy presents earlier or maybe all online so I don't even have to step foot into a mall or to a store. I'm going to set up for Christmas sooner. I'm going to get the Christmas tree out sooner. I'm going to set up the Christmas lights sooner. I'm going to listen to Christmas music sooner. Who's pre-Thanksgiving Christmas and who's post-Thanksgiving Christmas music? Okay. Maybe it's I want, I'm not going to listen to Christmas music at all. Maybe that's not your thing. <laughs> I'm going to spend more time with family. We're going to remember the reason for the season this year. I'm going to show my kids this year that it's about Jesus, not about the presence, not about everything else. I'm going to focus more on Jesus. Maybe that was one of your goals this Christmas season. But here we go again, another Christmas, another December full of everything. And not to mention throw a pandemic in the middle of it. Now we add the stress of maybe losing our job. Wondering if we can be with family this year. Maybe it was a loss of a loved one. The fear of everything going on in our country, and now we're worse than we started. But this morning, can you hear it? Do you hear him this morning? Our God is still trying to speak through the midst of it all. Jesus is calling out to you. God is speaking just as he did, and we pick up our story, one that most of us know all too well, but forget the circumstances that Mary and Joseph found themselves in. We can almost look at it like another story, that beautiful nativity scene that we set up every year on our mantle. We just set up ours on our mantle, and it's that pretty little you know, nativity scene or the lights outside, the nativity lights outside. We can look at it almost like just another Christmas story, but this ain't no Hallmark movie. It's not a Disney Christmas. This really happened. Jesus came for you and for me. It might be cliche to say it every year, but it is so true. This is a beautiful reminder every year when we get to this season is that Jesus came for you and for me. He came for you, and we can easily miss it. But think about this scene. Remember, we find our story in the midst of a crazy, crazy government with civil war about to take place, um, separated groups, segregated groups. It was not, it was, you know, there was a lot of turmoil with the different people groups um, around that time, with terrible, ruthless leaders, fear throughout the land, severe poverty for some, a chaos-stricken society, and our main characters, Mary and Joseph, breaking through the cultural status quo to do what God had called them to do. And Mary doing something that no one has ever done in the history of mankind, carrying the Son of God as a virgin, traveling a significant journey as a pregnant wife, which is crazy. Like, not, we're not talking about in a vehicle, we're talking about on foot, probably somewhere around 80 miles as a pregnant woman on foot. I mean, crazy. Not born in a hospital. Not to be born in a hospital, not in a clean environment, not even in a home, at like home in a bath or something like that. But when he was born, he was placed in a feeding trough used for slot for animals because there was no room in the end. Not the kind of scene one would probably blog about or Instagram afterwards. I know for me, when my baby girl was born, there was, she was never in an environment of germs. Uh, maybe you have a newborn or just had a newborn, like she... Our, our baby was never in an environment of, of germs. It was always like when she was first born, it was hand sanitizer central. Was, did you wash your hands? Did you use hand sanitizer? Wash your hands. Use hand sanitizer. Please wash your hands. Did you bathe in hand sanitizer this morning? Because we need you to do that. The closest she has ever gotten to like farm animals, we went to a pumpkin patch this year and uh, we saw the little petting zoo over there and we were approaching it. And I was like, those things are nasty. Like she's... <laughs> What she's going to do is look from the fence because that thing is going to bite her finger off or something like that, you know? And this is the scene that we find our Savior in. And yet through all of the chaos, through all of the noise, through the all the crazy stuff going on around them and all the conflict, 
God spoke. God spoke powerfully as the prophet said he would. Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, has come. He was born just as the word of God said he would be. And God spoke to some nearby shepherds to go and to see. We pick up our story in verse 8. Some of the kids stole my, my message this morning and stole, stole some of the, the scripture I was reading. No, I'm just kidding. Now, we're in the same, now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. Now, I love that Luke doesn't even take the time to let everyone know who these shepherds are. These are just your normal, average, everyday shepherds in the same country. Not the best of the best. Not the shepherds who were also ministry leaders or pastors in their local church. Not the MVP uh, shepherds, just hardworking shepherds out in the field. And through the chaos, through all of the noise and conflict, God speaks to them. God sends a multitude of angels to speak to these shepherds. Notice he doesn't send angels to speak to the chief priests or to the key leaders of the church, but he sends his angels to shepherds. And their message, there is light in the midst of the darkness. There is beauty rising from the ashes. There is a savior in the middle of the conflict. Jesus the Christ has come just like what was promised. And not just for the people in those times, not just for the Jews, not even just for the shepherds, but notice at the end of verse 10, Great joy, which will be to all people. Joy for the world. Joy for the generations to come. Joy for all of us. The angels brought a message of good tidings of great joy. The Savior had come. The child was born. The Son of God was given. Born in the city of David to take his throne. This would all be probably a reminder for what they probably heard all growing up as shepherds, as, as people in Israel from the prophet Isaiah. Remember in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, the prophecy that said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called, some of y'all need to hear this this morning, Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The shepherds went as the angels came and told them all of this. They, de they departed immediately. They went and they saw the wonderful counselor. They saw the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. They went to see Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus, the son of God. And when they saw him, after they saw him and experienced this great joy, they went and told the world what they saw and heard. This is our Christmas story. 
This is the Christmas story. Maybe you're um, familiar with it by sharing it uh, every Christmas with your family or you read it every Christmas. But this is the Christmas story that most of us have heard and read together. Well, I believe God is calling out to us through all of the madness, just as he did to the shepherds. And it's not too late to listen. I think we need to take a moment this season to pause and to listen, to listen for the Lord. It's not too late. It's not too late to hear him. He desires to surround you this year with his glory. As he surrounded the, the shepherds in the field with his glory, he desires to surround you with his glory. He desires to remind you of his son, the savior of the world who has come for you, just as he promised. Do you hear his good tidings of great joy he brings to us in the midst of everything that we're going through? Because this pandemic can't stop it. A government cannot cancel this. Crazy leaders won't be able to kill him off. Poverty can't rob him away and fear cannot hide him. Our wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace has come. He is God with us. And he didn't leave after this. Death wasn't even able to stop him. He rose again from the dead and is still God with us. And so much right now is trying to take our attention from what Jesus has to offer us in the middle of all this madness. Are you listening? Do you hear him? And why should we want him now? Because he is wonderful. Have you experienced his wonder in your life? There is nothing more wonderful and more beautiful than him. He is filled with wonder. I've been serving Jesus since I was 16 years old. I've been serving at this church for more than 12 years, and I, I, I still am in awe of who he is. He still surprises me. He is so beautiful and wonderful, and he is our counselor, and we all need it, amen? We all need his counselor. No matter what we're going through, we need his counsel. How do we get through what we're going through? Each and every one of us has come in with our own problems, our own pain, maybe our own suffering, our own victories. We're all going through something this morning, and he knows exactly what you're going through. He sees you where, where you are. He knows exactly the pain that you're feeling, the suffering you may be going through, the victories you may be experiencing. He knows it all, and he can counsel you through it. He is our best counselor. He gives us the best advice for whatever we're going through. And he is mighty. Nothing is stronger than him. Nothing is out of his control. He's holding everything together. And especially in this season, there's so much out of our hands. There is so much out of our control. But we need to be reminded he is the mighty God. There is nothing stronger than him. Nothing out of his control. And he is everlasting. He has no end. He had no beginning. He, he reigns from everlasting to everlasting. He is not just alive then. He was not just a great person then. He is alive now. And he brings us peace. Man, do we need that right now. Who else needs some peace in their life right now in this season? He will bring us peace that surpasses all understanding. And he is with us. Emmanuel, God with us, his presence has never left nor forsaken us. He's never left you. He is with you now. And he is with us now. God is with, with us. Are you listening? Are you listening? When the shepherds heard and, heard and saw the angels, they didn't just wait to see what happens. Notice that. They didn't just like, the angels didn't come and say all of these things and they were like, whew. That was crazy, right? And then went back to shepherding. It wasn't like, oh man, too bad we're so busy right now or else we would love to see what was going on over there in Bethlehem. But they went and saw Jesus. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You can experience the presence of Jesus now. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he gave us his Holy Spirit. So he has now surrounded you with his glory. Every week when we come into this building, he is surrounding us as his church with his glory. 
But guess what? You don't have to experience it just in here. As you walk out, his presence goes with you. He is surrounding you with his glory. Surrounding you with his glory. And all he wants you to do is go and see Jesus. And you don't even have to travel very far. He is with you. He has made a way for us to come to his feet. He has made a way for us to experience Jesus. All we have to do is come. Come to, him to wait, to, come to him today. Don't wait for something to happen. Don't wait for another year. Don't wait for another December, another Christmas. It's not too late to go to Jesus now. And just as the shepherds did, when you see him, when you experience his joy, go and tell the world about it. Go and tell your family about it. Go and tell your coworkers about it. The shepherds didn't go tell the priest to tell everyone, hey, this is what we experienced. Can you tell everybody else because of your platform that you have? They went themselves. It's great to bring someone to church to hear, but go and tell the world about the joy that you've experienced, the joy that Christ has brought you, the healing that Christ has brought you, the fulfillment that Christ has brought you, the love that he's poured out upon you, the mercy he has given you, the grace he has shown you. Go tell the world what Christ has done for you. Go tell them what you've seen and what you've heard. And finally, we don't have to wait for the host of angels to sing his praise this season. We can join with the multitude, with the host of the church who has experienced his presence Who's, who has experienced his joy together and praise him with everything we have inside. This Christmas, we don't just have to enjoy the traditional Christmas songs, which I love Christmas songs, but we don't have to sing these songs like we're reciting something in elementary school. You been there? Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king, peace on. And it's just like we're just reciting it like we're in elementary school. But we can worship him as his people with all of our hearts. To experience Jesus and to worship our Savior who has come for us. Are you listening? Do you hear him? God is calling us. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you so much for your word this morning. Jesus, we praise you. We praise you for who you are and what you've done for us, God. This season, we don't want to miss out on, on what you have to offer us, Lord. Lord, I can just sense it this morning. You are surrounding us with your glory. And God, you're calling us to press in. You're calling us to press in. You're drawing us to your son, Jesus, today. I pray that we wouldn't miss it. Help us not to miss it this year, Lord. We want to hear from you, God. So I pray, Lord, for this, for this church, Lord. I pray for each and every one of us, God. Would we pause and would we listen? There's so much noise going on all around us, God, in this, in this world and in this country, in our own personal lives, personal lives, God. But you know, Lord, what we're going through. God, you see where we're at, Lord. You know what we're going through and dealing with in our lives. God, we need your counsel we need your peace, Lord. I pray for my brothers and sisters in here, God. I pray for this family, Lord. I love this family, God. I pray for them, Lord, that they would hear from you this season. That they would listen. And that they would come to you, Jesus. With their head, heads bowed and eyes closed this morning. I'm not going to call you forward today, but I just want to pray for you. If you need prayer this morning, you need a new start. You need a new beginning with Jesus. The season has kind of been robbed away from you or something. Maybe something has happened in your life or just going through it. And you just need a fresh start with Jesus this season to come to his feet and to come before him and to offer your life to him again. Would you raise your hand so I can pray for you this morning? I see your hand. Thank you so much for raising your hand. Awesome. Thank you for being honest this morning. Anybody else? I see your hand. Awesome. Anybody else this morning? I see your hand. Thank you so much. If you need a fresh start today, I would love to pray for you this morning. 
I see your hand. Thank you so much for raising your hand. God, for all these hands that have been raised, Lord, this morning, I pray, Lord, that you'd meet them right where they're at, Lord. Fill them with your spirit today. God, give them your peace, Lord, that surpasses all understanding. We love you, Lord. We thank you for this time, and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen.